Welcome to Ofofo Studio. I have with me today Deep Young Tapa and Anurag Mehrotra. Anurag and Deep are from ThreatCorp. ThreatCorp is a cybersecurity company in uh, people security management space. Yeah, Deep, you've been an entrepreneur for 10 years now. Everybody knows about uh, ThreatCorp and Critical, about you, Pawan, uh, and everybody else. Uh, how have you started your career and how did you end up uh, being an entrepreneur? So, uh, 2013, I guess, second year college in IT Allahabad. Uh, Pawan, who is my batchmate and also uh, the founder and CEO of the company. So, his email ID got hacked. His Gmail account got hacked and we are trying to find out how can email ID get hacked. And we figured out that it's m not just related to the tech, but it's also related to the human error. And that is more vital in terms of, you know, anything getting hacked in the tech or in the internet. And uh, so mostly it was Pawan and Paratos who were the techie guys trying to figure out uh, how to solve this problem. And then we figured out that, okay, if we can do some kind of, you know, awareness or, you know, ethical hacking workshop to different nearby colleges and universities, we can make some money. We can use our weekends. And that's a good thing to do, I guess. So Pawan Paratos has started. Uh, and... Uh, I was just trying to you know, help them a little bit here and there. And uh, yeah, so that's how we started. I mean, college three years went by mostly weekends going and giving ethical hacking workshop and all. And what, you know, hear the long journey or? Yeah, yeah go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, and then 2015, we came to Delhi. I joined Paytm for some time as a product manager. We had taken office behind mm -hmm. Paytm. And I used to go after 6 p.m. on Para mm -hmm. full time. Uh, we started getting network from our college alumni, uh, trying to get some work. And uh, the work we're mostly security auditing of applications, infra and all, compliances, all of that. And uh, yeah, that's how we started. In 2017, I guess, uh, January around, I left Paytm when we got the funding. So we all were full-time uh, after that. I was full-time after that, yeah. And uh, yeah, and then we shifted to another investor's office. That's how we started. And then ThreatCorp happened later that year, 2017 end. Uh, we got a requirement from uh, South African Postal Office to have a automated security awareness uh, uh, solution. And we technically built it for them, thinking that we're going to make some money out of it. And when we built it and went to them, they said that we can't buy it because we don't have money. And then we were like, now we have this product. What do we do this with? And then in a week's time, one amazing guy, Vikas Yadav from, so then he was CISO of Max Life Insurance. He texted on WhatsApp that I'm looking for some automated security awareness con uh, product. And we're like, we have it. The next day we went to him, we pitched. Within a week, he bought our solution. And then we went back to office and then we started doing some maths. We figured out that, okay, if we work in the product segment rather than services, it makes more sense in terms of scalability, in terms of reachability, in terms of global expansion. And also the problem of human awareness was one of the critical problem because that was the problem that everyone faced, but very few companies actually solved it. Uh, the people as a weakest link in the organization. Yeah. So yeah, then that's how we started. And then we, we are here so far. Yeah. Okay. So this is like your uh, second uh, job. Threat, threat cop critical is like your second uh, work. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. And uh, what about you? How did you start your career and uh, how did you end up with threat cop? So, Mon, I started working for small, uh, as a SI. I started selling networking and all the solutions all across. And then probably I would say 2012, 2013, rather I would say. So I was making a switch and I was just talking to my one of the uh, founders, or the, sir, I'm leaving and uh, he called me up, why don't you come up to the security part? So I will refer you to a security company, why don't you go up there? And because networking was too much like crowded part of it, he said, why can't you jump into the security offer, offerings and all? I said, okay, let me give a try. He said, don't worry, I will refer you. And probably from there, I think 2013, 14, 
that was the period I started with the security journey and to date have been into the security part of it. And I still remember my conversation with ThreatCorp, I would say 2019 or September, October around. And we were sitting in a CCD. We had a couple of discussions and Deep was here in Bangalore. And I was, I went to a client place and I think Deep passed through. He, he finished that meeting and I was entering that meeting. And then we met at a coffee day. Hey, I saw you somewhere. Yeah, we saw each other. We met at that office. And from there, I think the conversation is there and we have been for almost three and a half years now aligned with. Every CISO in Bangalore. Yeah, that's very interesting. You know, I've been in cybersecurity industry for, um, for maybe 10 years. I've been to Australia, Israel, everywhere, right? But nobody knows me as a sales guy. But everybody knows Anurag as the sales guy in cybersecurity. How did that happen? <laughs> How did you make that happen? I think just of relationship building. My focus is not selling, but relationship. Mm. And that has been my key focus across. That's what I keep on talking to Deep also. Sell. If you're selling, it's not about only selling. If you're, you have a relation, wherever he goes or wherever you go, you have that relation and bonding, which goes across. So I can take the very first example when I jumped into cybersecurity field. I was just having a good relation with my boss. I went him to him, being a founder of the organization, I was giving my resignation and telling him, boss, I'm going. He's referring me, okay, you're going, go. And this is the place you go. Right. And I st still am in touch with him, talk to him, and he refers me wherever required. Nice. It's the relationship. So, Deep, uh, can you tell us about uh, uh, how ThreatCorp is important in the entire cybersecurity value chain. Like there is awareness, there is a uh, lot of things, right? There are audits that sell, pen tests that sell, and then there is SIM, SOAR, various categories in cybersecurity. Where do you think uh, education and awareness comes in, right? Because a lot of people in the industry are actually selling fear, like in insurance, right? So fear is what sells in insurance, and 90% of the time, fear is what sells in cybersecurity. How are you breaking that? Because nobody, everybody believes cybersecurity is boring, right? And educating somebody in a boring field is, I believe, a super duper challenge, right? How are you handling that? So, <clears throat> like you said, like it's a very big industry, and uh, sort of the biggest problem of this whole security industry is most of the attack that is happening today is because of employees mm -hmm. negligence mm -hmm. right so wherein let's say for example if i'm a hacker and if i want to hack any company i would rather send a phishing email or send some kind of social engineering tricks to a finance guy rather than you know hacking your server or application or anything it's much easier for me to hack a human why because i can fool him or, or let's say a hacker can fool him right uh so that problem is resulting to almost like 95% of the successful breach today is because of human's negligence, right? And it can't only be solved by awareing people. That's what we have realized in the last four years, I would say, uh, that we were pitching more of like an awareness, awareness solution. But now we realize that it's not just awareness, but we, we, we pitch in this, in the way that, you know, we, we call it people security management. Hmm. Wherein it's not just about awareness, but it has to be a holistic approach towards people like we do it for technology and process, right? So in technology, we have got like a lot of things that comes under it. Likewise, in process, you've got like a lot of compliances. Likewise, it is not just awareness for people, but it has to be a people security management of 360 degree. So uh, how we have broken down in this people security management is into four steps. First is your assess. Right, so SS is what is let's say for example this is a human, yeah. and um, what are the communication mediums that a human in, interact with other humans or other companies? So today we we use email, we use uh, calling, you know, mobile calling, WhatsApp, SMS, social media, right? All of those uh, different communication mediums. Yeah. Now, a person can get attacked from all of these kind of communication mediums, right? And they have to understand that they can be attacked. So in the first step, assess, what we do is we send 
attacks, simulated attack through all of these mediums. Let's say we send phishing email through email or ransomware through email. Uh, we do a wishing attack, we do SMSing based attack, we do WhatsApp based attack, we do social media based attack, all of those things. And then we see their behavior, how they are reacting to any kind of, uh, you know, uh, all of these attacks. And then based on their behavior, so the security head of a company can have a very clear understanding of who is the most vulnerable employee, most vulnerable department, branch. And that is based on employee vulnerability score that we calculate based on the, the behavior of these people, of the employees. And then once we have that score, we can very clearly give you information on uh, every employees, where do they stand in terms of awareness. The second step is uh, aware. First is assessment through simulation attack. Second is aware. So in awareness, uh, we what we have done essentially is we have broken down the whole security awareness topics into let's say 200 plus topics. And for each topic, we have designed uh, roughly around 10 different methods of delivery. So let's say for phishing awareness, we have got uh, three or four different kind of videos, small, small capsule videos, uh, infographics, games, uh, uh, your comics, right? So a lot of storytelling goes into it, uh, wallpapers, screensavers, right? So, so all of those. So let's say, for example, if anyone is getting bored by looking at a video, they can go through a comic. So if one is getting bored by looking at comics, they can play a game, right? So that's awareness. And again, like, you know, you can track everything. How much time they're spending everything and all that and then third step is protect wherein uh, we protect the domain of the company through any kind of spoofing uh, attack mm -hmm. right so we, we give them the solution uh, dmark solution through which they can uh, protect any kind of spoofing happening from their domain instantly uh, through the dmark policy and the last is empowering now this is very interesting this empowering thing because this is something that very very less like you know very few companies actually have started doing it now mm -hmm. but i think in the coming uh, couple of years it's going to be one of the most important thing in people security management wherein when the person receives any threat email or confusing email or confusing sms or whatsapp you have to empower that person there yeah right how how do you do that so what we have done through this empower is we have given a reporting add-on to every email client. If you find any email suspicious, you can just click on the button and report it. And also you can instantly get a feedback. What is the threat score of that email? And also we are building something on WhatsApp and SMS as well. Mm -hmm. Right? That's in the maybe we'll be rolling out in a couple of months. So we believe that once we roll that out, it's gonna be a massive uh, problem solver in terms of one of the biggest fraud that is happening in the country or even across the world is uh the common users of internet who are losing their bank uh, money that are in the bank through some OTP frauds, WhatsApp scam, you know, some fraudulent calls, all of that. So they can even report that on a real time and get a feedback. Mm. That is what we are trying to, we have, we have already built it, it's in beta. Uh, we are just waiting for a couple of more things to roll it out. Yeah, so this whole like, you know, people security management, we give as a solution to corporates now. It's not just awareness. Interesting. So you are creating a solution to Jamtar. Yes. And we are creating a new category from India in cybersecurity. I think it, it's going to be for the first time that India is going to give a new category in cybersecurity in the world. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Hopefully it happens. So a lot of uh, companies that do well in India, You almost every bank in India is your customer, right? Uh, for both. Uh, yeah, not almost every bank, but we'd love to have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <So>. <laughs> almost every bank, right? Yeah. So, and then uh, majority of the companies, cybersecurity companies that I've seen, they do really well in India. And then the first thing they do is they look at US. They hire some sales guys in US, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you guys seem to, seems to have cracked uh, Middle East well. How did you do that? Can you give some tips to the entrepreneurs? Tell us your story about how you cracked uh, Middle East. Cracking Middle East was, I think, Andra gave the right answer. Relationship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we cracked the relationship there. Uh, so I think Middle East is a very interesting market. Uh, it's a mixture of uh, Indian and the West. Mm. Uh, the CISOs in Middle East are mostly Indians. So, okay, when I say Middle East, it's UA and Saudi primarily. Yeah. They're the biggest market. They're almost like 75, 70 to 75% of the security market is in Saudi and UAE. Of, of overall GCC market. So, uh, 
And the way it works in Midlist is through distribution network. You can't just go and sell there like, you know, no one knows you. No one knows your face. No one knows your name. So you have to sell through people who have been there for long time and the customers trust them. Mm -hmm. So that trust you need to leverage. So we thankfully leverage that. Uh, so one of our distributor, Ras Infotech, uh, uh, we partnered with them during 2020 pandemic. And uh, so there was a very interesting phase in pandemic. We were losing business in India. And then uh, we we're trying to figure out what should we do. We we're trying to see uh, elsewhere than India. And we got a message from Akram, who is the uh, CEO of Ras Infotech on LinkedIn. And we started talking to him. And then so uh, after, I think, seven eight months, we cracked that whole uh, deal with uh, Ras Infotech. And they helped us bring roughly around 70 to 80 customers in the whole GCC region. And uh, what we realized is uh, we, we regularly visited that geography and just met the same person again and again. So we're not hunting down new people, like, you know, searching new people. We're mostly meeting the same people. Like every month, just meeting the same people. That 20 people. Just meet them. Uh, and the idea was to crack a uh, few accounts at first in each geography and also focus on same industry. And, uh, and that helped us. So now we've got a decent bigger logos that is helping us to get other uh, customers trust and they're coming on board as well. Yeah, so primarily it's distribution network. You have to leverage a distribution network that is already there. And it's all about relationship that works there. And also you have to, your product has to be pretty much competitive because everyone's product is there in middle East. Like if, when I say everyone, every other country's security product is there in middle East because they want to sell there. Yeah. Yeah. So Israel, US, Europe, like South, Af uh, South Africa or Australia, everyone is trying to sell there. Yeah. yeah. Is the purchasing uh, power parity of uh, Middle East better than India or do, do you think the, do you think you make same money with the uh, average customer here and there? Uh, it is better, definitely it's better. Uh, I mean, it's better because the per capita income is better than, better than India over there. Uh, the budget is higher, uh, right? And also the compliance is more, uh, I would say, more stronger. So like, for example, India, uh, so if you talk about security compliance, I think RBI has nailed it in terms of financial security compliance. Yeah. Uh, so that level of compliance is there in every industry, not just finance, but even schools, education, healthcare, manufacturing, uh, oil and gas, like everywhere. You have to have that security compliance in place. It's not just a tick mark, but it's like, you know, you have to have it in the right way. Yeah. So I think that has, that, that maturity is quite high. Uh, and because of that, I think the uh, value towards any product is higher. Uh, and therefore, they pay a little bit more yeah, than India. Interesting, man. I know GDPR from Europe recently, DPDP from India and California law uh, from uh, US when it comes to privacy, etc. I've never heard of any uh, regulatory compliances. compliances in Middle East. Are they yeah, the prominent ones? Yeah, there, are, there is Sama uh, from Saudi. Uh, there is uh, NISA in UA. So there are a lot of security compliances. But it's like regional. So we don't hear it about it. I mean, GDPR, we hear because I think uh, everyone who's trying to sell to Europe it has to have GDPR. So we all know about GDPR. Yeah. Uh, but it's this compliance is more for, for you know, uh, focused in that reason. So we don't hear it, uh, hear about it. But then it's very, very uh, common and like everyone has to comply. it, And it's very strong as well. Yeah. And that's also driving a lot of security business. Yeah. And Rag, you've been in a lot of uh, cities in India. How is Bangalore different from uh, Delhi or any other city when it comes to cybersecurity? We recently had uh, best practices uh, meet here as well, like yesterday, right? right? How 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 is Bangalore different from uh, uh, other cities in terms of uh, selling cybersecurity offerings to uh, companies in India? So I would say it's almost same, but the fact where it differs is like. The decision making which happens quite faster the tech part of it and the type of uh, on the technology part what i've seen people are more faster towards the technology okay you have a new technology come let's it let's have a round of discussion 
तो मेट्रो सिटीज लाइक मुंबई एंड to have met uh, amazing industry folks uh we raised i think in last round was 2019 first quarter yeah and then after that we have been profitable for the last 3 years yeah so yeah it right now it's in the more of like a bootstrapping so, so the like you bootstrap right you bootstrap little funding in the beginning and then eventually you become yeah, profitable yeah i think uh, not little significant funding to you know start the rocket mm-hmm. i'd say yeah Good. trust significant trust we got it from the investors excellent yeah if you have an option now uh, would you have gone back and bootstrapped or raised more money i mean i like my journey you don't want to <laughs> i don't want to change it yeah it's a nice journey i think you know what i see now what i see i mean obviously my thought has changed in the last 2 3 years before i used to say like kab karenge kab karenge kab bada banenge Yeah. when you're going to go big now it's more of like a journey dude i'm enjoying this it's not just about making a unicorn or we're going to be big we're going to like capture the whole market we're going to be monopoly i mean theek hai hoga kisi din hoga maybe but it's more of a journey we enjoy now uh so meeting people trying to learn to learn their problems trying to solve it and that's in the repeat repeat phase right now and it's really fun doing that meeting new people learning new problems solving it meeting new people learning new problems solving it you know that's a nice journey i don't know where it's going to go but then it's a good days so anurag uh, being in sales is extremely tough right it's very uh, different from a typical day job how does your routine look like man do you have a set of uh, things that you do in a day to keep yourself sane or so i would say I start my day with the sports activity preferably some of the outdoor sports probably whichever way it could be badminton it could be squash and then probably by 10 o'clock to the office of and then a typical workflow of the organization or whatever the activities which are pending probably and I as I earlier said ki my focus has been the relationships so I ensure most of my people who have been there whom i have been connected with i try to connect with them every second day third day just saying hello hi how's the things rather than jumping into my solutions or kuch chahiye so that has been my key and definitely other steps which i which i would say on the business front i ensure ki yes the activities are conducted on a timely basis to maintain my diaries whatever records are required to be maintained but yes the key focus still remains my relationships be it on a friendship or uh, on the sports side of it be it on the post professional side of it yeah anurag has taught me as well so uh so in that 110 people he is the most experienced guy <laughs> right so uh when we onboarded him we also onboarded other people in different other cities and that didn't work out but then he has been really patient and he has i think he has he has taught that relationship culture in the at least in the business team yeah. right that is something uh, we all have learned from routine by deep up subah uth ke kya karte ho sham ko kya karte ho matlab subah sham pura batao na yaar how was your day looking like <laughs> bro i mean my uh, weekdays are pretty okay like you know a little bit of discipline is there my weekends are really no discipline <laughs> <laughs> weekends i am like a I, okay let me not talk about weekends <laughs> skip weekends <laughs> skip weekends i don't know talk about it i just want to enjoy weekends so weekends are pretty good i guess uh, so thanks to one of my friends so recently it's been a two months i can talk about two months before that i don't want to talk uh, so one of my friend Actually, my wife complained to my friend that he doesn't do anything. 
<laughs> in terms of working out right and then my friend whom she complained has a six pack abs <laughs> like he is like gym guy for the last almost maybe 15 years or something till the time i have known him and he gave me some uh, recommendation of a app and this is very interesting the app is called habit tracker and i think it's only in android i didn't see in uh, ios that's a very wonderful app so that has helped me to at least cover uh, some certain discipline wherein in the last 60 days at least i think 50% around 35 days around i have done those six activities that i have assigned myself to do yeah so that that is pretty much uh, for the, of the last two months and before that don't ask me so deep you more than 200 logos uh, for the product uh, so far it's a good place to be in i'm sure uh, the biggest of the pics in uh, cyber security are reaching out to you right what, what is your vision like for the next uh, two years in in terms mainly in terms of product where would you ideally want to be yeah i think <clears throat> uh, i can tell you about people security management right so it's not just about threat cop where we want to be but where we see the industry has to be hmm. so uh, right now everyone is talking about solving people problem with awareness right and we see that this is more of like a very old thought right even the gartner's topmost companies like uh, everyone is trying to solve through the same way and uh, we see that this is not the right way because we are we haven't been able to solve like even the attack is increasing predominantly the uh, the money spent or the, you know the money getting minted out of the company's bank account is increasing right so what we see is we have to have a different approach to the same problem uh, and we are calling this again people security management right so here are a couple of things that we think should go or should happen to be taken more seriously by the industry uh so number one is i think like now today we have a data uh privacy officer in every organization we think that every organization should have a people security management specialist right wherein they have someone in the in the organization in the security team who is specialized on people security management and uh, we are going to do this so we are going to start this whole thing uh so we have certain number of people that we have certified on people psm uh, we call it psm people security management uh, and the way we see is we are going to uh, bring this whole people's database and we make it going to make it public and we are going to give it an access to the world wherein if anybody wants to have a specialist on psm they can you know hire from here so that the culture is created right so now the whole mindset is how do you create a category how do how do uh, secure in cyber security multiple categories people security management also becomes one of the uh, vital category because that is the biggest problem right today so one is obviously creating that uh, uh, that whole platform of psm specialist that is that is one we see uh, second is uh, we have been morely mostly focusing when i say we like the whole industry has been mostly focusing on the employees employees uh, security awareness uh, you know employees strengthening and all we have to go beyond and we have to say about the consumers right the financial industry is losing money not just because of those financial companies are getting hacked they are losing money also because the end customer is getting hacked right because they don't have that awareness they don't have that capability to protect they don't have that empowerment any tech right so we have to go beyond and not just send any emailer to this consumers or not just send us sms awareness or just you know radio advertisement but we give them something they can take help from right so this people security management is going to go beyond employees and go to end consumers as well uh yeah so that the two primary things and uh and and another thing that i think you know will slowly build is we'll be trying to cover all the communication mediums in this people security management right so today we have covered email we have covered uh calling whatsapp sms uh we are trying to build social media uh, simulation and awareness as well right so we're trying to build all the communication mediums maybe let's say tomorrow genji guys would be mostly interacting on 
what are these apps instagram apart from instagram i mean i haven't used discord it. Dis- yeah discord yeah. right and snapchat yeah, yeah i haven't used it so i don't know what's going on in snapchat are people getting uh, you know scammed on snapchat right like all of a sudden people are starting you know go, get the phone they start using internet they go to snapchat they get uh, scammed how do you aware in that case right and that repercussion has huge huge uh, uh, impact like people get into mental health issues and all right so that's a, another another like you know dimension of problem that is getting created because of all of this kind of things and i see i see people security management is going to be one of the most vital thing i mean government of india is spending a lot on this they they are very serious they are spending in schools in colleges uh, they are making mandatory for every banks now they are they have made it mandatory for their cons- consumers as well right so every other government is very serious like in middle east in us and europe everywhere so it is going to be one of the biggest priority in terms of security for i think every government every organization whatsapp and telegram are the most uh, used by hackers to sort of scam people and both of them don't actually take the responsibility of uh, protecting the consumers for example you can't uh, block a person uh, who is not in your contacts to send you a message right any random person can send you a message in whatsapp right after that you have to block them and the moment you interact with them there is the possibility of you getting scammed is very very high yeah. right i heard pawan saying something about uh, you guys doing uh something extraordinary using uh, gen ai in uh, uh securing whatsapp and telegram sort of uh, messaging platforms can you tell us a bit about that yeah so that's uh, that's more of like a working in work in progress right now and uh, we'll make it live very soon uh i can't disclose too much of information on it uh so you can say like you know it's more of like empowering again mm-hmm. to the end user or employees or any anyone for that matter you will have a uh, you will have a weapon in your phone we'll give that weapon to you to find out any attacker in your whatsapp or sms and if you find that attacker you can shoot him that's the empowerment we'll be giving yeah that's something like that i can on a very high level fuck <laughs> yeah so if somebody has to find uh, threat cop uh, online how do they do that they can go to their browser put threatcop.com enter on the top right there are two numbers if you are from india there is an indian number if you are from out of india there is a us number you can call or there is an email you can reach out through email or even there is contact form in almost every other place you can contact through every other form and we going to be there in your inbox in few seconds deep such a pleasure hosting. thank you mom thank you so much so awesome to have you here well such a pleasure meeting have you here